Welcome back to the King's Queen where I teach you how to master your hustle. Today I'm going to show you all how I create t-shirt designs once again. The last two videos have been um, without me talking to you all. They were just a couple over the shoulder videos so that you all can see how I design t-shirts. But today I'm going to show you all how to create this specific type of design. Lots of people love these. I don't really know what you call them. It's not a sunset. They have the gradient sunsets. But this is a square. So I guess it's just a gradient square. But for some reason a lot of people don't know how to create them. And it's just basically rectangles. And you line them up the way you want them to. But I have found an app on Canva that makes this a little bit easier and if you have a problem with complementary colors that um, gives you trouble this app is going to solve your problem so if you'd like to see how we're gonna do this stay tuned now these designs I have seen them both with graphics on top of them and I've seen them without so whatever your preference is that's what you do but today I'm going to put a graphic on top of the gradient boxes so I'm going to use this one specifically and if you're going to use the um use graphics and you want to use a color from your picture do this first. I suggest that you click the the letter T so that you can um, have some text there just so you can pick a color from the um, the color picker. That's what the text is for right now. So I'm going to change the text to a color that's in the picture so that I can use it for the app that we're going to use. So click on the picker and I'm going to pick, I could go with brown, but there are so many different ones with the brown. I think I'm going to go with the green that she's wearing in her shirt just to stand out a bit. So I pick that color and now I'm going to copy the hex code. So I just double clicked on this number. And I'm going to click Control and C to copy it. I'm not sure what you do on a Mac, but for my PC, it's Control and C. And now I have that copied. I really don't like this light of a color, though. So I think I'm going to go with a darker color just so we'll have more to work with as the gradient moves along so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this again click the color picker and tap on this darker shade of green and now I'm gonna do the same thing and copy that hex code now the next thing that we're going to do for now I'm gonna delete that text and I'm going to move her out of my way. Make her a little bit smaller for now. Now I'm going to go over here to the left and click on our apps. And I'm going to go into the search box for our apps and type in shade, S-H-A-D-E. And this first one that's up here is the one that I want. And as you can see, it gives you a ready-made palette of colors. This is the default color that they give you. I'm going to double-click what they have here and put in the hex code for the one that I copied from her shirt. And as you can see, you have a array of colors, and I am going to 
click this purple um, button down here to use it but I'm going to show you first off whatever color you pick it's going to give you a complementary set of colors if you want pinks or purples blues greens oranges whatever color that you pick is going to give you this set of complementary colors to make a palette out of but I'm going to put that code back in and click on this purple button down here and this looks more more black than green it is it's black and gray I don't like that it looks green over here on the left but here that's really gray so I'm not going with those colors I'm gonna go with a brown I'm just gonna wing it and find a color that's close to brown I don't want to use brown but I don't want this video to be longer than it needs to be either so we're gonna use these sets this set of brown here and I'm going to click the purple button again and there we go with our palette of colors now our next step as you can see I have this selected I'm going to ungroup them because everything is its own element so you can ungroup everything and I am simply going to highlight over all of the words and the hex codes now take uh, into consideration if you want to use these colors again copy down the hex code so that you can use them at another time if you want to um, or take a screenshot of your palette if there's a way to save them I'm not sure so write it down or however you want to do it but I'm, I have highlighted all of this and I'm going to simply delete it and I'm going to be designing this for a darker shirt but if you're designing for a white shirt I would suggest just getting rid of this top color here because it's very light and it's going to look kind of awkward on a white shirt but I'm going to be designing for a black one so I am going to keep it okay our next step we're going to extend these boxes now if you do move them they don't stretch into rectangles really so we have to do it the way that I'm going to show you <coughs> simply highlight all of them and I'm going to group them so that I don't move them out of place I'm going to click again and I'm going to duplicate and then I'm going to put them side by side it can overlap it doesn't matter it's not going to hurt anything if they're touching and I'm going to drag over them again control and D for duplicate and I'm going to pull it over see when you separate it it look, looks like this I'm just going to lay it over it a little bit it doesn't matter where you lay it as long as they're touching and I'm just going to keep repeating this until it's the the length that I want it control D for duplicate like this and that ought to be enough and I'm going to select them all and I'm going to turn it sideways I like it like this you could leave it the way that it was but I'm going to turn mine and now I'm going to extend it just to have a bigger surface to work on and now I'm going to turn my background black since I'm designing for a black shirt this makes it look a little bit more realistic and that's simply how you do that that's step one now to add wording and all of that that's not hard at all I'm gonna pull her down I want her in the front though
ever since I told you all that I don't use layers, I have been using the layers. That's crazy, but I want her in the front of everything so that I can use her later. But I'm going to group all of these together so that nothing gets moved out of place. Just highlight them all together and click group. Okay, now I'm going to put the wording. Um, you know, I like to use the word queen. I do that a lot, so if it's not broke, I'm not going to fix it. So I'm going to type in the letter T, and I'm going to type in queen. I could do melanin queen, but like I said, I don't want the video to be too long. So I'm just going to do it like this. I may change the font, but I'm going to show you all how I do the gradient with the letters as well. And it does not matter that each letter is not specifically over one certain box. That's not really going to be a problem. But to simply to change the color of the letters you simply highlight one letter at a time you go to your color we're going to pick a color and we're just going to start at the beginning and if you go in order everything will be fine if you want to skip a color that will be fine as well for the U I'm going to since those two colors are so close, and there's my son in the background. Since those colors are so close, I'm going to go to the third bar and just skip the second one. And for the third, I'm going to go to this one. And for the last one, I'm going to pick whatever that color is. It's not exactly white, I don't think. So, there we go. Now we have queen. And it matches the gradient of the boxes. And if you want to change the font, feel free. And I like doing gradient fonts because it's so pretty when the gradient, it doesn't really look right when it's all caps and in the the um, font is cursive. So I'm going to change this right quick just to show you all how it looks. If it'll do it. Okay, this is not even changing for me, so let's just go on to another one. Yeah, I like this font better. But it may not line up just the way it's supposed to, but like I told you, it's still going to look okay because it's using the same letters. And I would just separate this a little bit, put some space in between the letters. I often forget that there is a letter spacer and I don't use it as often as I could. I'm going to make them even. Center it. And after that, all we have left to do is make her a little bit bigger. And I'm going to remove the background from this image. You could use Magic Grab or Background Remover, it doesn't matter. 
We're just going to get rid of that background and position her. I'm going to put it to the left. Then I'm going to make her a little bit bigger. So we don't cover up all of the colors. And you could put flowers at the bottom of her or whatever is your pleasure. But that is basically all there is to this type of design. Really cute, really simple. And you could just pump these out like nobody's business. Different niches, different topics. But... That's all it is. I wanted to show you all that. I wanted to show you all the app that is on Canva. And I believe it's for everyone to use. I don't think it's a pro feature. And shout out to the Creator Classroom. She's the one who actually was using this app. And that's how I even knew that it was there. So go to her channel, the Creator Classroom. It's a great channel. She does a lot of Canva tutorials like I do. So if you're learning from me, you can learn from her as well. But um, that's all I have for you all today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you made it this far, drop me a yellow heart down in the comments. And until next time, be blessed.